Hi, I'm Patricia Taglarini and welcome to Sew Journey. Today I want to teach you how to bind a quilt when we take the back of the binding and wrap it to the front. This is a disappearing nine patch. The pattern is by Missouri Star Quilt and it's called Nine Patch Madness Quilt. It's very easy. So let's go ahead and get started. After getting your quilt back from having it quilted, the next step is binding. You're going to have extra batting. In order for this to work, you need to take your scissors and cut right next. So you're taking this off, but I'm not taking this back piece. So I'm just cutting carefully all the way around. When you're finished with that, you're going to take a ruler and put the one inch, which is right here, and I'm going to take my rotary blade and I'm going to cut it off one inch all the way around. Now the trick that makes this work is a wing clipper two. There is a 45 degree line here and a 45 degree line here and here is a quarter of an inch. What I'm going to do at that point is rotate this ruler around so that these two 45s are directly on the edge of my quilt. And the, 40, the extra quarter of an inch is here. This is a 45 and this is a 45 and I'm going to trim this off. You're going to do that on all four corners and then you're going to go to the iron and you're going to use steam to turn this piece down till it touches, not over, the edge all the way around. Normally I don't use steam when I'm piecing, but for this I want a nice crisp edge. Once you have it trimmed to one inch all the way around and pressed back, then you're going to take a marker. This is iron out chalk. Be careful that what you use will not ruin your fabric and I'm putting a mark in that fold. So you can see this is the fold right here. All right, then we're going to take this quilt, I've got to bunch it up for you here, and I'm going to put wrong sides together, and I'm going to match my corners right here. I'm gonna put a pin in it right where that chalk line is. I don't want this to be uneven. It will lay better if you pull it up and put one more pin in. And then I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew only from here where the pin is back to the fold. Back tack here, back tack there. I'm leaving this end open. So it's very short seam. It's only from here to there and it's a quarter of an inch. All right, let's go to the machine and we'll sew it down. I'm going to take my quarter inch foot, which is on, and I'm going to slide this up. This is the folded edge. This is the open edge. And I'm gonna back tack here and stop on this line. Try to keep my hand out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to stop on this white chalk line. All right, my backstitch button puts my hand in your way, I'm sorry. All right, come all the way up to that line again, which is right there. Now I want to point out that I've sewn from this folded edge to the chalk line, not this. This is left open. All right, now I'll show you the next step. All right, we need to turn it to the right side. So I'm going to put my finger in, my thumb on top, and I'm going to fold the seam over and tuck it in. Usually it doesn't need any more than that. This is already ironed down, so I'm going to refold it, fold it back over, tuck that in, and there's your perfectly mitered corner, and I'm going to put a pin in it. Same on this side, all the way around, and this will lay perfectly flat for you. Put one more pin a little bit closer here, so when I turn when I'm sewing, it will stay. Then you're going to go all the way around your quilt doing the same thing. I'm just going to pull this over. Now I'm not pulling it super tight, but I am making it taut so that it will lay straight. I'm going to make sure that this seam is in one direction. 
so it's not got a, a curve in it. And then I'm going to turn where I folded it down. Same thing here. Fold it down. And you see there you have a perfectly mitered corner. And I'm going to put a pin in about every four or five inches all the way around the quilt, turning it down and folding it down. If you use glass head pins, you can iron on top of them. If you don't, I prefer you don't iron on top of it because the plastic will melt. Let me do this corner and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All the way down. Let me put a pin here. Put a pin here. One more pin and I'll show you what I mean by ironing. You do realize there is a difference between pressing and ironing. This is a press. Okay. So take your, pin, your steam iron and press. You're just putting it down on top of it. Fabric has a memory, so it's going to stay in that fold. This just helps the other fold lay flat, as you can see. And then I'm going to go to the machine after I get it all pinned down, and I'm going to sew close to this edge all the way around. I have an open toe foot on. I have 2.5 in my length, but I'm going to move the needle over to the left. Most machines will allow you to do that somewhere. You'll need to check your manual. But I'm going to move it way over, and I'll show you where it is here in just a minute. All right, that's probably going to do it. And then I'll show you where I'm stitching. With the foot down, I'm going to watch this edge right here is lined up, so the foot's going to come this way. And I'm going to move this needle over so that it sits closer to the edge. And you have to look in your manual to find how to do that for your machine. But all of them move over. Alright, that's perfect. I have the needle down in place, and you can see it runs really close to this edge. This is the seam I'm going to put in. Let me show you the best way for this fabric. I am putting my hand underneath it so that there's no drag from the weight over here. I'm lifting it up. On this hand, I'm going to put my thumb under it and I'm going to flip it up. The control comes with this hand. This hand, the left hand, just keeps it from dragging. And go ahead and start sewing. I'm following this inside and this is how I, how I control it. I'm going to continue to sew straight, removing the pins as I go, until I get to the corner and then I'll show you how to maneuver around that corner. Remember, my left hand is holding it so there's no drag on the weight. My right thumb is under and up. I'm not pulling it tight, but taut so that it stays where I want it to go. And I'm guiding it with my right hand. All right, here is the seam that we had before. I want to come up and put that needle right in the middle of that seam and then lift and turn it to sew down. Kind of have to slow down a bit right there. And as it lifts, I'm going to flip it around and then continue the same way, putting my left hand underneath it to hold the weight and then guiding with this right hand, removing the pins as you go. All right, as I come to this second corner, let me show you how to do that. Here again is that seam that we put in, the mitered seam. I'm going to sew all the way up and put the needle a quarter of an inch from the edge, but in the middle of that seam. Turn it around, rotate the fabric to keep the weight off of it, and continue sewing. Go all the way around till you get back to your starting point. Alright, this is where I started sewing, and I'm going to finish sewing right there. Back tacking to finish. You only need to back tack about two or three stitches. All 
right, let me trim this thread and I'll show you how it looks. Here is your mitered corner. Here's the seam we just put in all the way around. This is the front. And here's what the back looks like. Here again is that mitered corner. Here's the seam we put in on the back all the way around. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll try to get back to answering you. Thanks for watching. Okay. Hi, welcome to Sew Journey. My name is Patricia Taglarini and behind me I have a nine patch quilt. This is called um, 